This is part three of my um, epic bulb haul. Do you remember when I bought all those bulbs? I'm going to do two more planters today. I'm going to do them the same and I'm going to use those lovely um, honey lilies and these tulip, uh, black parrot tulips and these uh, leftover tete a tete and narcissi. So let's get into it. Right, so I decided to layer these up. I've seen this done before. I've seen it done in videos. I've never seen any results. So I'm going to do it. And then what I'll do is I'll film the results next year when they flower, which will involve filming obviously the three different stages. So the reason we're planting in these layers is so that we have a succession of flowers through the season for these um, bulbs these were my planters I planned to do all these but I had an ant issue with my compost which took me forever to solve so I actually ended up only doing these two planters um, so what I did was I put these bro a broken pot I smashed it up and I put the crocs in the bottom as we do to stop the roots and the soil blocking the drainage holes because we don't want the bulbs to rot off I mean most of you will already know these basics I didn't have any food so I'm just going to use this leftover rose and shrub food and I'm going to kind of water that in um, and then I filled it up uh, about a third of the way through to put in my bottom layer so what I have to do is you have to think of uh, what's going to flower last and you plant first what will flower last so you have to work out then that these uh, flowers are going to go in succession so the honeydew will flower last the tulips will flower neck uh, second and then the narcissi which will go on the top will flower first so you have the narcissi will come up first then will come the tulips and then will come the um alliums the honey lemon i'm not quite honey um Ah, oh, I forgot what they're called. Anyway, I'll put the link below and you can see anyway. These ones here that I'm showing you now. They're honey lily. Oh, that's it. So, um, and you have to check on the packets when in the season they will flower. And to be honest, it may not exactly work out. So you, these are trial and error. I, as I say, I've seen people layer up bulbs before, but I've never seen anyone post a follow-up video. Or maybe I haven't looked hard enough. Um, so what I'm going to do is hopefully bring those to you, but obviously that's going to be for next spring. These are the alliums, the honey lilies. Um, these have quite big heads, like um, hand-sized dangly chandelier heads. So I'm actually not going to put too many. I mean, obviously you want them packed in so you have lots of nice um, flowers uh, filling the, the pot, but... I don't want them too um, packed because there needs to be room for those heads when they fill out and open out. So this is where I had my ant problem. I realised that my, there was an ant attack in my uh, compost heap and um, they were all in the compost where I was putting the bulbs. So here's my next layer after I'd sterilised my compost. I'm going to do another video on compost. I actually did not make a very good job of my compost. It's full of debris here because of um, uh, people just randomly throwing things in that aren't suitable. And I had plastic in there and um, all the rabbits bedding. So it's it's been a bit of a nightmare. I'm definitely going to be much more strict when I come to doing my next compost heap. Um, you know, now that I'm sort of realising the problems from not being disciplined about it, I am pretty sure I'm going to be much more careful. Um, so here we go. OK, so. Um, oh, this was where I lifted out a spider because I um, had to kill the ants. And um, the way I did that was not nice. I didn't want the spider or the centipede to get it now what I did find was actually if you just turn over the soil and dig it out the ants will leave if they don't like it um, so I watered watered it very heavily to um, discourage the ants that were in there 
when I went back to my actual compost heap later, when I'd taken all this soil out, compost out, I noticed they had actually gone. So they obviously don't like their ne nests uh, being disturbed. Okay, so the next layer was I did these sort of filler tulips. These were just from Aldi, actually. Um, and then in each one, I'll share these kind of very beautiful uh, parrot tulips, which are much more expensive. So um, I'll fill all these pink ones and then put the black parrot ones, which are a complementary pink, but much more ornate. And hopefully visually that will give the impression that I have more of the parrot tulips than I actually have um, because they will be sort of bulked out with these more, you know, these cheaper tulips, which were which are fairly bog standard, but a matching colour. So I'm going to equally divide. I think there was one extra. So one one's going to have more than the other. I don't always do matching pots, but the these... Um, the pots were really pretty i thought i really like these big terracotta sort of pots um so i thought i'd give this a go um, layering up these bulbs see how we get on we've got a dog in the village as well and it screeches every time it goes its owner goes out it's absolutely horrendous they obviously it's one of these lockdown puppies that people talk about that and now this person is going back to work. This dog is absolutely tormented. And it's it's horrible. And you can tell it's not even near me. It's like right over the other side of the village. But that's how loud it is. It's, it's very distressing to hear it. All right. So there's those done. So let's put the soil uh, compost over the top of these. Now the, one of the problems I do foresee with doing planting this intensively you know all these bulbs in this one pot is uh, separating them out if you want to preserve the bulbs so that's going to be an interesting experiment we'll see how that how that works and also planting it this way you know I did this big bulb haul well and get through getting through my bulbs pretty quickly actually um, so when you're potting them up like this, that those, those bulbs suddenly don't seem to be as, as um, such a huge amount as I first thought. I thought, oh my goodness, I haven't got the space for all these bulbs. But layering up like this means you can just have successions of flowers uh, within these same pots. Well, that's what I'm hoping anyway. And I am going to do a follow up video so you'll be able to see the results and then know whether you want to do a pot like this for yourself next autumn. Um, so do subscribe so that you remember and click the notification bell and then you'll get notified when I do upload those videos. All right, so now we're going to get to the final layer, which is I had some, these are scented um, dwarf daffodils, narcissi. Uh, I had some of the tete -a tete left over from my other bulb planting video, which I can link up. Uh, you can either click on this here or... Uh, link in the, there's a link in the description below um, and I'm just going to obviously evenly spread them out and this is really not rocket science but just make sure you plant them oh I hope that's one of my tulips otherwise I'm going to have a I'm going to have an odd interloper flowering in here later next year so the other thing I'm going to be noting uh, in my notes next year uh, when these flower is um, if how many of them flowered. So tulips, I've noticed, can be a bit, well, I guess it depends where you buy them from, but they can be a bit temperamental. Um, so I'm going to um, make a note of how many of them actually flower and how successful this is and then just spread these other ones in because I want them quite these are quite small so I do want these quite tightly packed the only trouble with planting them in these planters of course is I don't really like to use them for cut flowers because I don't want to spoil the planter and I do a lot of my flower planting for cut flowers and I put them in my borders and pack them quite tightly so if you take a few out you know it doesn't really make much of an impact you, you still have the flowers in the border 
but when they're in pots that's a little bit more difficult to achieve so I'm going to collect all the labels together and put them in my gardening notebook but first I've got to cover these over with the remaining compost and then I'm going to put uh, chicken wire or hard cloth over the top to stop certain thick dastardly and mutleys digging them up to hide bones or a certain fluffy pussycat going the toilet in them so I'll show you how to do that in a minute so I'm just going to water these in really to wash the edges really of the pots. Um, the, the, the compost was already damp from dealing with the ants but I can't stand all the soil around the edge of the pot so I'm just going to wash those off before I do the chicken wire. Alright so this is what it looks like. Um, this is left over from a border. I did a raised bed and then I put this over the top otherwise my animals would definitely have got into all that soil but now I don't need that anymore because uh, I have established plants in that bed so I'm going to cut these this down to fit the top of these two pots and I just use a pair of these have I got them on there these clipper pliers or whatever you call them and it, it goes through these these metal rods or whatever you call them uh, pretty easily I just snip through it and I'm going to cut two of these. I'm going to fast forward this. You don't need to see me do this. You don't need to watch this. And then there they are. You don't need to cover it entirely. I've just done a strip over the middle and then you just, it's very bendy. You just bend it around and that will be more than enough to deter squirrels, your dogs, if you have them like mine, and also cats. And you'll find that once the flowers start to sprout, the animals don't tend to bother getting in there after that. So um, you can, once they start to come up and they've got good shoots, you can just remove that hard cloth. And this is the gardening book I was telling you about. You can buy this from Amazon. I'll put the link in the description below. I record all my planting in here. I've also collected sweet peas today, sweet pea seeds. So I'm going to grab a coffee and I'm going to sit down and I'm going to write up my gardening notes for today. So here it is, this notebook. You can buy this from Amazon. It's uh, colour coordinated so you can at a glance see the seasons. These are all the plants I've planted anyway and I just keep the covers in the, in the book um, as well. But then I make a note. So as you can see, autumn is this nice rust colour and um, I put the date in the wrong spot um, because I'm no good at making notes while I'm being filmed and have you noticed, has anybody else noticed, I mostly use keyboards now and I hardly ever handwrite anything and I actually sometimes almost forget, and not forget, that's too strong but I, I definitely don't write as smoothly as I used to because I just don't do it that often. Isn't that weird? Anyway, so, but I actually really like writing them this way because I don't want to go and have to switch on my laptop and or I, every time I want to um, make a note of something from the garden. I much prefer doing it this way. This is your supplier list. Look, you can put all your supplies so you know where you've got your good bulbs from. This is the colour coordinator. So autumn is rusty, summer is blue, spring is pink, winter is green you've got these spare notes and you've got this overview here that you can write for any um if you've got any targets you know for that year you can put them in the little overview at the beginning you know your aims for that for that year so a lot of my aims this year was hard landscaping so i didn't really do as much planting as i would have liked I had to rearrange my garden because it was, it was so boring when I moved in. It was just lawn and patio and it was ridiculously covered in slugs because there was no balance. There was no nature balance. So there were no mm -hmm. birds and, well, if there were, they were poisoned. You get into this, uh, uh, when you poison everything, when you don't have an organic garden, you get into this pattern of always having to 
put down chemicals and weed killers and slug pellets to combat what would otherwise have been balanced out in nature. So after a couple of years of organic gardening and only trimming hedges in October uh, when the birds have finished nesting and the fledglings are strong enough, you can trim your hedges. Uh, but you must have hedges and thickets and things like that for the birds to live in and the birds will eat your slugs and also you have to have insects so you don't if you put chemicals on your lawn or your uh, plants you're going to kill the insects that's going to destroy the balance the birds are going to go somewhere else to feed because they need a variety and then you get overrun with slugs and so the cycle continues Anyway, I think I'm going to do another video on organic gardening and how I do it and how I keep my garden in balance and, you know, pesticide free. Um, but for now, that's it. Anyway, I've recorded everything I need to record in my notebook and my bulbs are done. So let's see how they get on. I can't wait to report back in the spring. In the meantime, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe, share with your friends, click the notification bell and like. Comment in the comment section below if you've got any questions. And thanks for watching. See you again in the next video. Bye.